We believe that wealth is a journey and that this is your jumpstart to trading success. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Traders Mind Chat show. Today, we have a very special guest. His name is Dennis Wilborn. Now, he is uh, the IBD meetup leader for BAM, the Bay Area uh, Moneymakers Group. He was also featured in Amy Smith's book, How to Make Money in Stock Success Stories. And it all started from trading in 1987 part-time while on active duty in the u.s navy fascinating story can't wait to hear more about it dennis thank you so much for being with us today thank you michael i appreciate it uh, i'm so grateful to both you and melissa for inviting me to to share a little bit of my story appreciate it yeah absolutely so uh, can you tell us, uh, well, what, what was it like trading uh, back then well, in 87 part-time? Yeah, you're, uh, like, uh, like I'm picturing that, that you're, you're doing training runs uh, for, the, for the Navy and you're like learning how to, to fly uh, planes uh, and all that kind of thing. And then here you are like uh, not picking up a cell phone and placing orders or anything like that. How, how, are, you, how are you managing all that? What was that yeah. like? Yeah, you have to remember back in 1987, there was no cell. I mean, there were, the cell phone was just not even invented yet. I mean, it wasn't there yet. Uh, in 87 is when I really turned on to, to the market and just absolutely right. loved it. I'm an engineer. Uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, what cracks me up is I uh, went to the University of, of Texas and I, and I got my degree in aerospace engineering. So when people say that trading, you know, doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to learn some of these trading systems, uh, some of the trading systems I see out there, I, they're so complex and so convolu convoluted. I say, hey, I am a rocket scientist and I can't understand what you're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so what, uh, what, so I got started in 87, primarily looking at mutual funds, you know, the old regular way. And they got turned on into the market of the, the charts just intrigued the heck out of me. Started learning about Bill O'Neill. And just after I finished grad school about 1990, 1991, that's when I really plugged into trading stocks. How was it? Um, well, back, gosh, I, I hate saying this because it makes I, I date myself. Back then, I had to plug in via a phone modem. I had a charting program that I downloaded on my 286 machine. Mm -hmm. I could download like 30 stocks per, per day. It only had like three to four to five years worth of data behind it. It took over an hour and a half to download the data. Oh, wow. And, and it was basically the, 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 and I don't know if you, you guys are probably too young to have ever used a, a phone modem, but it'd go ding, 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 as you turn yeah, no, it on. I remember well, we, that. We know that very well. That's what I had in high school. Uh, I was in high school at that time. Oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I would download and then I'd open, you know, after it finished download and after dinner, I'd start looking at the charts, looking at the charts. And I could only have like, I only had 30 tickers I could download. That's, oh, and wow. so. And How did you just go about selecting the 30? Um, Back then. IBD, Investor Business Daily. Okay? okay. I would just hone in on, you know, maybe 20 or 30 of their stocks to see okay. what they were like. And that would be uh, make up my watch list. And so I started learning about technical analysis. And then as things progressed and got, you know, more advanced and, and then, you know, once we jumped into trading platforms, it was a piece of cake. But yeah, back then I would trade three or four or five stocks and I would literally, I needed you back then for my, my trader mindset. Cause I was one of those guys, I would pick up my mobile phone and I would sit there, I dial in the fidelity about once every 10 minutes to check on how my stocks were doing and oh, no. <laughs> on, the, on the phone. Right. And, and I said, Oh, I'm up. Oh, I'm down. Oh. And, and uh, so it was crazy. Uh, but uh, you know, that's the, the lack of information. Uh, but again, things are a lot simpler now, but, but partly maybe like Mark Minabini says, Maybe the the cost of entry to learn how to trade now is too 
small. So people jump in without having a really great system to be trading. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a fair point. Um, so, it, so you started well with IBD way back when. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that, that's such a great place to, to get your, your start. Oh um, yeah. Like, like I, I think about like, like how I started it. I kind of started well with the mutual funds too, but um, I had no idea about that. I just thought that you now you take money, you put it in more money magically pops up the other end. And I didn't <laughs> find out about IBD uh, until 10 years later. Mm, yeah. And so that, that, that's great. They got started well with IBD to, so early. What, so was it, did you have sex, success with their systems right away? Or, or what, what did you, um, how long did I it take you to finally piece it together? Literally, I was not a very good student uh, because I made uh, the mistake I see so many people who have a technical background made uh, make, even now, is I, I took the information, but the engineer in me said, I can make it better. I'm going to develop my own system. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And so I just uh, started making a complex, con you know, convoluted type of approach. Didn't really understand what Bill and Neil was trying to tell us in the, you know, how to make, how to, you know, make money in stocks. I didn't understand what he was saying from this aspect of being simple and, and, uh, and, Thus, after hammering around for many, many years, I finally uh, settled on, hey, I need to have a clear and simple approach. And that, that's basically the motto of my active trim trading business is a clear and simple uh, approach that uh, helps people uh, basically uh, increase or multiply their, their profits and minimize their losses. And uh, again, uh, what I found out was trading is about eliminating variables rather than adding variables. Mm. And the more variables, and the biggest variable I had to learn how to control, I had to look at every morning in the mirror. It was me. Ah, interesting. Uh, how did you come to that conclusion? Uh, blowing up many accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> blowing up you know, several accounts and going, why am I continuing to make the same mistake over and over and over again? And, uh, you know, and that's basically where I came to it is, is something, if I've got a good system that is a, a legitimate system that has been a proven performer, and I'm not re getting the similar result, there has to be a missing piece and missing link. And oftentimes it's the, in what you, you know, you guys do with the mindset, it's the mindset of, 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 you know, because everybody comes into trading carrying a certain amount of baggage and it can be their ego. It can be their, you know, uh, uh, I have to be right. It can be junk they may have picked up from their mom and dad about their perspective about money. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, uh, but yeah, I'll get into a little bit more of that a little bit later when we're talking about systems, but that's part of it. And so, yeah, I didn't have instant success, uh, but um, now, it took me about 20 years to get to the place of finally getting the system down to where I'm trading now a great system that has been back tested, proven uh, for the past 10 years. We've done, you know, I don't trade all the time. I think that's a very important thing. Uh, but on average, we've averaged uh, uh, a little bit over 37% per year for 10 years with a, with a win-loss ratio of 65%. <clears throat> That's great. Yeah. So how, tell us a little bit about your system. How, how does it work? Well, what do you do? Well, <clears throat> basically, Mike, is, is the system is very simple. Is what I did, you know, like about 15 years ago when we first started putting this together, and when I say we, my, my youngest son was helping me at the time. He had just graduated from college. And what I did was I took a look at different trend trading systems mm -hmm. and I cherry picked what I thought was the best pieces of them from okay. investors okay. business daily. What I picked was the stocks. I am not a, uh, um, 
uh, fundamental kind of guy. I, I hate doing fundamentals. I really, I really do not like doing that. How, so what I did is I hired it out. I follow the IBD fundamental analysis. And if a stock, you know, if they have vetted a stock onto one of their premium 14 plus, you know, uh, watch list, that's good enough for me. Then I bring my expertise in once I've sorted that down to maybe 15 stocks per week, I bring in my expertise, which is technical analysis, because I, I have done all the coursework to get my CMT. Uh, uh, but, you know, you get to a certain point in life and, you, you know, I don't need any more initials behind my name, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah. But the, 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 you know, the coursework, you know, about a master's level, you know, people don't realize to really be a student of the game, you have to keep training yourself and you're going to be basically doing a level of education that is equivalent to about a master's level or even a doctorate type level to really learn trading the way you should. But then comes the application. So how, what else do I do? Uh, we took that and then we back tested it. Uh, uh, for over a 20 year period, we went back and tested against the S and P uh, uh, for over 20 years. We saw that, you know, saw our, our uh, results from that. We liked the results. And then what we uh, came down to, then we started forward testing it. And what came from that is a, you know, a trading system where I have all my rules on one page and I'd be glad to share with anybody who wants, would like to have a set of my rules. Yeah. I have a, I'd love to hear some of your rules. Okay, rules on one page is, is basically, I have three rules to enter, five rules to exit. That's it. Uh, part of my rules inclu is, is inclusive of focusing on primarily on one entry. One, one entry. entry. One that, uh, like meaning like, like a particular pattern or a particular, entering yeah. all at once? Well, what do you mean by one entry? No, a, a particular pattern. That's basically my trigger. Um, uh, Mark Douglas talks about that and uh, in his, one of his, you know, in his book, uh, uh, yeah, Trading in the Zone. I'm sorry, I look at my bookcase over here. Uh, mm -hmm. Trading in the <laughs> Zone. And, and he talks about that, become a master of at least one master one you know particular entry trigger and you will do well you know basically then that generates consistency and that generates discipline that generates forces a person to be patient uh and so part one of my one of my triggers is i utilize what's called the true strength index True strength index. I haven't heard about that. Well, what's a true strength index? True strength index is a uh, uh, a oscillator that does a. It's a little bit like stochastic and a little bit like RSI, but what it does it is uncanny at showing uh, when it's down in its lower level, like the stochastic. It's uncanny on when it reverses back to the upside. That that oftentimes coincides with market bottoms or, or at least, you know, and uh, so I focus on that. I'm trading, okay, the price action, uh, but I'm looking for things in the price action like a candlestick, like a hammer or a, uh, a shooting star to the down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, the shooting stars, it's very patriotic. That was perfect timing. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that was? That was, that was one of my, my I've, I've got my uh, trading platform going in the background. So that was one of my alerts that just went off. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so was that the shooting star in the background? That, uh, no, no, let's see. Uh, what I think is happening is, oh, okay. Uh, I entered a position on TNA this morning, you know, uh, the uh, three-time leverage ETF of uh, IWM of the Russell. And yep. it just, it just popped up back above uh, a resistance zone. And so it was, uh, it was shooting, it was basically giving me the alert sounded and uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of have my alerts set up. So I have some fun with it and, you know, like the stars and stripe forever, the Marine Corps hymn and, you know, and so when they go off, they mean different things to me. 
Uh, I've got one also that is set up that goes dive, dive, and you can. <laughs> it's it's a submarine thing, and you can imagine what you know that means for uh, you know the the, uh, the particular entity is heading down. So that's where that's a fun it? and creative way to do it. I love that. So so Michael, where were we? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I, I was gonna just ask like, how important is it to make this game fun? Like so many people like approach a market and they're just focused on like making money or finding the next trailer. How important is it to have fun with this? And well, huh. when did you start to uh, to implement those kind of fun things? Um, when I stopped being so serious about myself and stopped taking myself so serious. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, for to be a trader, regardless of what kind of success you've had in the past. Trading can be one of the most humbling, um, humbling adventures that you can go on. And if you walk, if a person walks into it with a big ego or thinking, you know, I'm really, a, you know, I'm the smartest guy in the room. Well, guess mm-hmm. what? The market's going to slam dunk you. And as John Carter says, it's going to rip your face off. And so, you know, who the heck? I mean, I don't want to get my face ripped off because it's happened too many other times. I have had my face ripped off by the market. It is not fun. It hurts a lot. And, and sometimes it, the emotional scars that are left from that take time to heal and, mm-hmm. and can also make a person gun shy to be able to be able to trade properly. So when did I have started having fun? Um, when I stopped being such a serious engineering type and said, you know what? It's, uh, I think it goes back to something like, like uh, Tom Sosnoff says, he says that, Wealth creation is a derivative of mechanically addressing opportunity and recognizing that the systems we use, that I use is a very mechanical system. And that, it, that has also helped utilizing that system has helped me get past the, help me better manage my emotional uh, approach to the market. So, so yeah. And as you can see by the, the alerts that just went off, yeah, I, I have, you know, I couldn't have timed that better. And it, and I did not set it up. It was already set up ahead of time. You know, I just want to let you know. And if another one goes off, that's the. <laughs> I, I'm kind of looking forward for another one going off. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, man. So um, uh, back to, to your rules. So, so you mentioned uh, you were talking about the, the entries. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you mentioned the, the true strength index. Uh, and, and, you started to explain the, how it's a, an oscillator. Uh, yeah, and, and it's available on, you know, it's available on Thinkorswim, the Thinkorswim platform. It's also on, on some of the other charting platforms. What I did with it, with the, uh, you know, the TSI, it was, it was referred to me by a couple of my traders down in Texas. And since I went to the University of Texas, I, you know, I, I recognize that anybody who would suggest something from Texas has to be right. <laughs> <laughs> But what I, what I found out is I modified it slightly, of course, that's my tinkering, and mm-hmm. made it where it was more responsive to the market. And I, and I keep the settings the same. I, you can use it on all time frames, all the way from monthly, weekly, daily, even intraday charts mm-hmm. uh, with similar tie And they give me a really, it gives me a really good indication of it's a momentum indicator was what it is. And what I found is if I will wait for my momentum indicators to shift and it's, it's a convergence of clues and the price action to, to, to go in the right direction with either a hammer or show me a reversal and then start climbing above the eight and the 20 day moving averages and we get across then I have a really green, good green light to trade pullbacks back into the moving averages. And there, this is my trigger. So it's a, it's a convergence of clues to say, okay, and I'm looking for at least three of my clues to be in line. And then I've got a green light to start trading to the upside. And I'll apply it to both trading um, uh, ETS, leverage ETFs. I, I, gen- I generate a uh, on the radar or on autopilot trading service where I provide mm-hmm. five stocks every week and I show you exactly where I'm going to get in, what my profit targets are, where I'm going to get out. 
uh, and uh, and that's done really quite well uh, over the you know, over the past year. We are up seventy percent last year, which was really good. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know what makes me happier about my system than anything What's you know that? that I take great joy in is when the members of Active Trend Trading actually trade it better than I do. <laughs> uh, I just interviewed uh, one of our one of our traders, uh, you know, uh, who actually lives in North Carolina, and he's already up 100% for the year. He was up 100% last year, and 70% the year before. And I just celebrate his success because you know. And I actually had to interview him, going, "Okay, what am I not doing that he's doing?" Because <laughs> that's the other thing about you know. Life as a trader, it, you have to be open to what? To continuing, continuous learning. And, and you're continuously refining what you're doing because you want to get better and better and better and better to ultimately become a master trader. So, and then the rest, so that's kind of the, the basic, you know, one of the, the, the uh, 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 my primary entry trigger. I look for uh, pullbacks into moving averages a lot. And that's either to trade to the upside or, as you probably notice on the charts you look at, oftentimes you will get that similar type pull back or pull up into a moving average when things are going to the downside. And, and those are the triggers. And then my stop losses are, are basically, I typically keep around a 5% stop loss. And then I trigger it out of my trades uh, three at a, you know, uh, in three positions. Normally, if I'm trading in stocks or ETF, I want to get out somewhere between. I want to take out a part of the part of the profits somewhere between seven and ten percent. Mm, why some? Why why between those two levels? Um, typically, because my initial stop loss is normally between three and a half to five percent, and I want my risk reward, my basic risk reward, to be at least two to one. Mm-hmm. And that's what it gives. That's why it gives it to me. That makes sense. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I follow a very similar method where, where I'm looking at uh, risk multiples uh, okay. and uh, scaling out into strength uh, on the way up. I think that's uh, a hallmark of, uh, of a professional trader. But something that that you mentioned uh, just a moment ago that I, I want to make sure it doesn't just slip under the radar because I find it that fascinating is that you've been trading for, for over 30 years yeah, and you are still actively learning from other people, other people out like well, within your own community that are performing, that are taking what you're doing, performing the, it, uh, the, you know, having great success with it and then learning from them. I think that the, that's so key because Often the mindset can be that, okay, like, uh, like I've got my thing and I'm just going to focus on this and not take anything else in and the learning kind of stops. Sure. Uh, yeah. I just think that, that that's uh, uh, a wonderful, Thank wonderful you. thing. Thank you. Is there a question there? <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you adopt that mindset? Oh, gosh. Um that's one of those I have to credit to my dad, believe it or not. And my, my dad, when I, when I joined the Navy way back when, um, and, and I originally enlisted in the Navy, the Navy, and I, that I won a scholarship in the Navy to go back to college. Um, when I started to become an officer in the Navy, my dad told me as I started on that journey, he said, because my dad was an enlisted guy in the Navy uh, back during World War II, he said, son, Always listen to people like your your chief warrant officer, your, your chief uh, 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 petty officer, because they've gone through the ropes. Now they will be lower rank than you are, but their experience is much higher than yours is. Mm-hmm. So never discount what they want to you know tell you, and never come in like you know you're the the pros from Dover, if you will, uh, uh, and and. Uh, say, hey, I've got my college degree and I'm hanging on the wall. I'm the smartest guy in the room because typically people who come in with that kind of attitude thinking they're the smartest guys in the room won't learn anything from anybody. And they basically are going to uh, 
just be stopped. I mean, you know, their growth is done. They're in, they're in their own little paradigm and they'll never get any better. So that's, I got it from my dad, you know, basically that everybody, you can learn something from everybody. What a side effect of that now, now that I've, you know, in, into my silver fox part of my lifetime <laughs> is, is that uh, sometimes younger folk, younger, younger men and women, when I ask them to help coach me up, they are taken back a little bit because, well, wait a second, you know, you're the old guy, you know, how are you coming and asking me for help? And, and I said, well, one, I respect the heck out of you. And, and also, um, you know, you're doing something that I need to know how to do because I want to keep getting better. I mean, that's, that's, that's the deal. Why do I still run, Mike? Why do I still, you know, try to beat my 10 minute a mile, you know, run when I'm out running the hills of my Makakilo at, you know, I'll be six, 70 years old my next birthday. I keep doing it because the inside of Dennis, I want to keep getting better, not just in trading, but in life, in relationships, and anyway, sorry. It's so I, I, inspirational, I Dennis. That really is so inspirational. Like you said, we're we're constantly growing. We're constantly, you know, looking for the next challenge. And so, yeah, with that, yeah, I agree. So, thanks, Dennis. <laughs> Yeah, and well, we're going to open it up for the, to the audience that's here live with us to, for questions. Uh, so, uh, so for everybody that, that's here live, well, whatever questions that you have for Dennis, start putting them into uh, the chat. There's a little Q and A button. Melissa will go and manage uh, that. It looks like there's uh, some in there already, um, Dennis. So before we jump into that. Uh, can you tell us, a, uh, you mentioned the, some cell rules uh, that you had too. I was wondering uh, if you could walk us through a couple more of those selling rules uh, that, that you mentioned that are on that index card. Sure, uh, Michael. What I do is based on the selling rules is uh, I've already put a current one where I wanted my first profit target. I, I designate my profit target much the way you do. I want to be taken out on string. Okay. Mm. And so uh, one of the things that, that in, in part of what beginning traders need to grab a hold of is they need to understand the secrets of the compounding process. Yes. Okay. And that once they learn the secrets of their compounding process, then they need to learn how to accelerate that. So we don't want to think about, you know, just doing 6% per year or 8% per year. Per, per year, as the S&P typically does, we want to figure out, well, what can I do to generate 5% per month? Mm -hmm. Okay, what, how do I need to trade? How do you need to manage my, my trades? Because a 5% five to 6% five compounding amount, uh, compounding factor per month will give you about 75 to 100% return for the year. Right. Which is something that's doable without necessarily risking uh, your capital trading options. Nothing wrong with trading options, but that's one thing I liked about the story of Eric, who's up 100% for the year. He does that without trading options. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the other sell rules are, I have an upside target, my T3, which I call it, is at um, uh, uh, typically 20 to 25% strict, straight out of IBD, you know, take some profit off at 25%. T3. Well, then, well, what does T3 stand for? T is profit target three. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And then my T2, which stands for profit target two, uh, is at just halfway in between. Now, what am I, okay. And then once I hit T1, Michael, I automatically raise my trailing stop to break even. So therefore, even if the trade just totally craps out and goes against me, I've at least made some profits on the trade. Because oftentimes what I, what I find working with uh, new, newer traders, they're pretty good at learning how to put on the trade, but right. they really are not good at taking off the trade. 
and they're like a deer in the headlight. The, the trade will run up 10 or 15 percent, because, but because they have no plan or no system to take profits, they'll watch as that trade reverses against them and drops down to zero gain. And then what unfortunately happens oftentimes is it then goes to 10 percent loss, 15 percent loss, and, and lower. And, you know, when you, that happens, that's how you blow up accounts. If you do it enough times, you're going to blow up your account. There's, there's, there's uh, you know, and, and blowing up account does not have to be the rite of passage to become a great trader. You can stop it if a person is trained and teachable. So, mm. so, so anyway, that's uh, you know, kind of like when I was flying, uh, we unfortunately would lose some of our, 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 you know, our squadron mates because they would, get tar what we call target fixation. And what it is, is when you're going in to, to, to deliver, a, you know, deliver bombs or deliver a weapon system, they get fixed fixation on a point on the ground where they wanted to drop their, drop their ordinance. And unfortunately, they would not listen to all the sound that was going on in the cockpit. And mm -hmm. they would literally fly themselves into the ground and, and die, well, die, of course, but uh, because of target fixation, they were so locked into, I've got to hit that target. And you translate that to trading, I've got to make so much money, I've got to do this, rather than becoming a master of the system and, and, and process, therefore letting the, letting the profits take care of themselves. That's a so. beautiful analogy. Uh, and, I, I like that quite a bit. I, I'm going to work uh, on that myself. <laughs> um, a question that, that I did have for you too, uh, I, I'm, I'm curious. You, you had mentioned that you first you start to take profits at about twice what you've risked. Yes. Right? Uh, right. Why, no, why that? It, you mentioned that it's because you wanted to make, uh, to lock in like two times the risk. Uh, did you ever try to test like, well, what happens if I took a little bit off at one times my risk or uh, like uh, other types? Uh, how did you settle on taking it there or starting there? Uh, I think that get, I think the answer to that question is very, um, yeah, maybe a hidden a little bit, but uh, if you look at best practices of swing trading or trend trading, uh, mm -hmm. The majority of the, the really, you know, the peop re people of renown, they talk about always maintaining a risk reward ratio of two or three to one. Mm -hmm. And so that's partly, you know, as I said, I cherry picked from other trend trading uh, 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 systems. Like this. So I cherry picked that to say, okay, that's what I need mine to be. Uh, have I back tested it? No, not really. But what I will do also is if I get a run up, let's say I run up 4% uh, and I'm just shy of hitting my, my, my uh, 7% or so, I'm watching, you know, I'm looking at the, the, the uh, afternoon charts saying, okay, do I need to move my stop loss up? So to at least break even uh, because there's no need to go on that, you know, rocket ride to the downside if the, the candlesticks and the, uh, momentum is just not shifting. Uh, I love what, again, what I mean, Mark Minavini is, is, you know, he's written some really good books <laughs> to talk about that. He talks specifically about how did he win some of the, the trading championships. And part of it was, he said, he would, um, if the stock doesn't start, momentum-wise doesn't start to move in his direction of his expected trade, he gets out of it as soon as he can, as soon as that becomes evident. And typically he's expecting the move to happen within one to two to, th to three days. If it doesn't happen at that time, start looking at, hey, how can I, I need to protect myself because it's not, this particular entity is not behaving the way I'd like it to. Hmm. So does that, does that, did I answer the question? Uh, yeah, you did. Uh, you did that, that does answer it, thank you. Okay. Um, Melissa, well, what do we have in the, in the Q&A? Okay, we have a question from uh, Gustavo. He asks, um, how does the autopilot trading service on uh, your website, Dennis, work? And what's the average return so far? Okay, uh, the average return on it last year was 50%. Uh, this year, we're up about 11 to 12% on it. 
Uh, and so it's right about what the markets are doing, slightly below. But again, I, I know, because I know my system, that it will repeat in the, the uh, uh, accelerated compounding, we'll take it over what, whatever the market does for the year. So that's where we're sitting at. How does it work? Uh, the way it works is, you know, you can do a monthly or a, a, a yearly subscription to it. I encourage people to get the combo. Uh, what I find is it will narrow your focus down to seven ETFs, three, and three of those are the um, 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 index ETFs, and I have four sector ETFs. Uh, the three uh, uh, index ETFs are the S&P, uh, the Russell, and the NASDAQ, and then I focus on the semis, I focus on the biotechs, I focus on um, uh, oil exploration, and the, the financials on the other one, and we tend to trade, simply trade the leveraged ETFs for those entities, either up or down, uh, and uh, then I generate five stocks per week for my autopilot trading top five list. That is a culmination of, I sort through, here's a, this is a long answer. I sort through all 14 IBD premium watch list every weekend. I come up with my power rank elite watch list, which is about 15 stocks. Then I do my technical analysis on those to come up with my top five that I want to trade that week. I send out on Saturday and Friday, uh, Sunday, a what I call my uh, autopilot pre-flight checklist showing you exactly where I'm going to get into the stock, what my profit targets are, what my stop loss is. Uh, for option traders, I let them know whether there's weekly or non uh, or, or um, monthly options and whether or not I want to be trading the particular options. And, um, and then we just track that. That goes out. Uh, our members typically take about an hour per weekend, put their conditional orders in, and they're done. It's kind of fire and forget. Uh, and then we let the system work for us. Well, because many of them are engineers and that kind of stuff. They're all, you know, they're working and so they don't have time to spend a lot of time watching their individual entities. I find that's, that's one of the big shifts that I did make is stop looking at so many stocks and ETFs. There are too many to manage. So thanks for that question. <laughs> uh, approximately, well, what would you say your average holding time is uh, on each trade? Uh, one of the things we've been really successful, our folk, one of our focuses, you know, as I was talking about tweaking to get better uh, is, and refining, is we started focusing more on wealth generation or, or wealth building this year. And so it was important to let our winners run. Our average holding times now is right about 17 to 20 days. So about a month or so. Uh, okay. And uh, which is, you know, some of them are a little bit longer, but on average about 17, uh, 70 to 20 days. All right. Yep. And that, that also benefits us, Mike, just, kind of behind the scene that benefits us from the, the uh, accelerated compounding perspective. Cause mm -hmm. I'm, I'm searching for that compounding factor of about five to 6% per month. That's what I'm after. All right. Perfect. Um, I have a question see. for you, Dennis. You mentioned um, a lot of people having an engineering background and uh, going into trading. Um, I know you mentioned a little bit earlier in the interview that, that having that kind of technical background could also be a detriment to some um, to some parts of trading. Yep. What would your advice be to somebody on, on this interview now who does have more of that technical way of thinking? How can they help still stay uh, well-rounded and be open to other ways of trading? Well, Melissa, I tell you, you know, I was told a long time ago that, you know, there is no such thing as a civil engineer. You know, I am a civil engineer. I know none of us are really civil. Um, <laughs> and so, so one, again, it's kind of like to stop taking yourself so serious. Two, stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, like, I appreciate that you, you know, you're doing, you know, uh, you may be a great programmer and all that kind of stuff. But the number of engineers who've come up to me and say, I am designing a black box for trading. 
and and uh, those you know the black boxes. I mean, sure, there are some bots that trade out there and trade very very well, but they're very very complex. And and uh, what I found is is it kind of goes back to what Tom Sosman said is that learn how to mechanically address your trading. Uh, get like uh, Mark Douglas says in, in both of his books, hone down to just one trigger, you know, one pattern that you're going to become such a master at that you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, uh, you really don't have to worry about it trying to redevelop something. Uh, but I think we engineers, we spend a lot of time trying to reinvent the wheel because, because we think, you know, we're, and in reality, even if you go back and one of my favorite charts in IBD is the chart of Tennessee coal and iron from 1898. I'm sitting here looking at it. It's in, in Bill O'Neill's book, how to make money in stocks. And you look at the patterns that are on that 100 plus year old chart. And guess what? It's the same patterns we see today, which tells us that the most important piece of the equation is the psychology of the people trading and human emotion is what drives the patterns on the chart. So learn to interpret those chart patterns and, uh, and uh, you know, the time you would spend trying to develop a system and you develop, you know, a, a, you know, your own system is, you know, spend it with your family <laughs> mm. <laughs> and some other things. So now that that's, that's great. And, and if you are developing a system, I will throw this out. If you're developing a system uh, and do the back testing on kind of stuff, you know you're stumbled onto a system with an edge if you're getting over a 60% win-loss ratio. Uh, Thomas uh, uh, Bolkowski, who wrote the book, The Encyclopedia of, of Stock Charts, and I hope you've, you've, Michael, you've probably read Bolkowski's book. Uh, I actually have not read that one yet. Okay, excellent book. He goes into the probability of individual stock patterns okay. uh, uh, being successful. And what he says is that you should, you know, if your system is less than 60%, basically you don't have an edge. It's no better than just flipping a coin. He says you want to seek a system and develop a system that has 60 to 65%, then you know you have an edge. Then when you implement your system, if, you're, if your edge isn't showing up after 100 plus trades, guess what? The, the system fault, fault may be in you. <laughs> is, is that, the, huh. That, and, uh, that, that's an interesting perspective. So, well, how does he go about factoring in? And uh, let me know if you buy into this. Uh, so if you are making it, uh, two to one on uh, your trades and right. you're, you're winning uh, half the time, then obviously that, that's a winning system and you'll flip that coin all day. But what happens if you you have a, a 40% win rate, but your, your average gain is uh, two or three or four, uh, then you, you only need to, to win. Uh, with I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, that that can be the case. And, and that gets back down. Is that in system design or is that in system management? Mm. The, the question I would ask. And, you know, one of the other things I see people stumble on is, is they, they try to trade strategies without having it connected to a system. Your system is, is your rules. Your system is how, what keeps you out of trouble. Uh, your system is, you know, where you put your stop losses and all that kind of stuff. And I've seen too many people blow up their accounts because they're trading oh, the, the hottest and latest option strategy, or they're just, you know, trying to wing it. You know, we don't need no stinking rules. You know, I'm just going to go you know, <laughs> trade, uh, trade, you know, whatever, you know, the, some of the CME type of stuff. And I'm not saying that they're not making good money, but at the same time, eventually, if you're not trading a system and you're only trading a strategy, the strategy will, you know, as, as John says, rip your face off. And so that's one. Um, the, uh, I, I like your aspect of mindset also, 
Uh, like I said, if your mindset sucks, so will your trading. Um, I, my question for you is how do you adjust, help people adjust their mindset? Because uh, I know that, that uh, for myself, that, you know, it, it's a common, for me, it's a combination of not only how, but what I think. Right. And so what, what's your, you know, how do you, how do you help people to, to adjust their mindset and so that they then become, and what metrics do you use to, to demonstrate somebody who's becoming a better trader? Well, uh, I think the first thing that people need to do is take inventory uh, mm -hmm. of well, what it is uh, that they believe. Um, is, well, we, we have so many uh, thoughts uh, and ideas about trading. Uh, like, well, what do you actually believe about trading? And so it, that goes into, well, what is your, your system, right? So um, the, your system is a reflection of your beliefs so that you would start to write out those kinds of things. Right um, also kind of goes hand in hand with what your beliefs about money are. So that, that's really like the step one, taking inventory of what are your trading beliefs and what beliefs do you have about money? Because there's been so many um, traders that'll have a, like a, a great system and be up, uh, you know, two R uh, on a trade, three R on a trade, but because um, of uh, some limiting belief about money, they'll, they'll take off the, the trade um, too early right. uh, and not let the winner run. They'll, they won't uh, sell at a loss because uh, they have a, a belief that, uh, that they need to win um, or, or some other conflicting beliefs. So in order to get our beliefs in a line, the first thing that we need to do is take them out of our head and put them onto uh, mm -hmm. a paper or somewhere into the physical world. So that way we can start to look at them objectively. So that's mm. really uh, well, what I would consider the, the step one. And then going through those uh, beliefs and uh, starting to figure out, does it align well, with our goals? And like, uh, are, are these set of beliefs helping us get uh, closer to our goals or, or are they not? Yeah. Um, and then from there, uh, we could start to see, well, this belief is not leading me closer to my goal. Maybe I could take that belief and toss it aside. Yeah. Sometimes you'll be able to do that. Sometimes you won't be able to do that. If you're not able to do that, then you want to start asking yourself, well, well, why? <laughs> yeah. Right. Because maybe that belief is linked to four or five other uh, beliefs that are serving you in some other way. Like all, all the, everything that we believe is uh, serving us in some way. Yeah it's all serving us in some way. So we, uh, or it, it, it's attempting to, or it did at some point. So we want to try to recognize how did it and how, well, what's it trying to do now? Right on. And right on. then it's kind of like repurposing some of those beliefs. So that, that's one way to, to go about doing it. No, I, I love, I love that. And that's one of the reasons why I think, um, I appreciate you coming to the BAM meeting, you know, the Bay Area Moneymaker meeting uh, uh, to chat about that because that's where I find just a real a weakness by, 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 because we don't, many people just don't want to address that part. And one, one of the big takeaways I had from that is you said, you know, once you've answered your first why, keep going because the real why is about three, you know, seven layers deep. And, and it's like that so much in all kinds of, of, of you know, throughout life. And, and I think we as traders, uh, we kind of march to a different drummer anyway. And it mm -hmm. reminds me of, of the ancient script that talks about, it says, don't, confer, don't conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and I just absolutely love that, that, you know, that, that quote. And I, and I recite it quite often. My wife and I believe in living that quote. And so, uh, uh, but, uh, I, so I don't know. <laughs> I do I have a love couple. that. I really, I want that. Yeah. Like right front and center. Like that is an amazing quote. It really makes you, yeah. And think so, about things a different way. It does. It just, uh, you know, cause, 
because you know society teaches us conform, conform, you know, get yourself into the little groove and all kind of stuff. And the fact of the matter is, is, is um, you know, as you look throughout history, some people were given a different spirit. And, you know, the people who explored and, and came across the, the, you know, explored across in the pioneers across the United States, and kind of, they had a different spirit than the people who just stayed put, right? Mm-hmm. And so I kind of look that as traders, we have the spirit of, of exploration and of discovery, at least we should. Uh, and uh, so I, I'm sorry, you know, sorry for going off on a tangent. No, this, this actually leads me, Dennis, to my question, and then I'll hand it back over to Mike. But um, yeah, Spirit of Venture, I see, yeah, you, know, you were served in the, the U.S. Navy. Thank you again right. for your service. And I was just curious to see if any of those things that you developed in the Navy, like any of those skill sets, helped you become a more disciplined trader. And if any of those things um, come to mind that you can share. Oh, wow. Melissa, you must be reading my notes here because I have that <laughs> Well, I wish I, I wish I was there with you in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, hey, we have a guest room. You know, if you guys are, there, <laughs> and I mean that wholeheartedly. We're we're good with that. So, um, you know, I, I made the statement: learning to tra- learning to trade is more difficult than learning how to fly. Uh, I, I think part of that comes from the aspect of. When I learned how to fly, there was an SOP, a standard operating procedures that we had to follow uh, that was written by, you know, basically by not only the aircraft manufacturers and all that kind of stuff, but also some of the SO, standard operating procedures was written in the blood of the people who actually, you know, died during test flights and all that kind of stuff, and they've learned what needed to be done. So there was an SOP to you automatically learn. When you first start trading, there is typically, there, there is an SOP, but nobody knows how to get to it when they first start. You know what I'm saying? Um, the other thing is the importance of simulation. You know, the importance of simulation. Uh, they say to know if your system's going to work well or not, you need to have at least a 100 trades under your belt. That's where people suggest doing paper trading and all that type of thing, which is, which is very important. And, and, and it's so much easier to, to, to do today, paper trading. Thinkorswim has a really great platform, uh, their paper trade platform, where you can literally go through the process of putting in your trades and all that kind of stuff. But it's limited to the uh, uh, to normal you know, market hours. You need more than that. If you want to accelerate your training, what did we do when, we were in, when I was in the Navy? We went to the simulator. I mean, literally the simulator where we simulated what? Our emergency procedures are, how to navigate, how to do all the things that we would need to do in the live airplane. Uh, I know that a lot of the emerg- emergencies that we had or I had when I was flying, because I was in a single seat airplane, there was nobody in, the, in there with me. When I'd have an emergency, I had to handle it myself. Much like trading, huh? <laughs> <laughs> And, and the fact of the matter is, is the training would kick in because I had done hours of simulating that emergency. So, you know, people talk about, you know, uh, visualizing their trades. I go a step past that. You don't want to visualize your trades. Uh, you want to rehearse your trades. Rehearse what could go wrong. Rehearse what could go right. Recurse, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and then, so that all goes into developing off of your system the routine that you're going to practice on a daily basis. What's your before the market routine? What's your after the market routine? What's your during the market routine? And if you're a trend trader, now, okay, this is the way I approach it. If you're a trend or a swing trader, you don't need to be watching the market when it opens in the morning. It will basically just drive you nuts with the, all the noise and, you know, and going here, going there, watching the ticker go by. Uh, and it, that stimulates our emotions. Emotions dumb us down to where we're more likely to make stupid mis- or, or impulsive decisions about trading and make unforced errors and lose money we don't need to lose. So it's hmm. swing and trend traders go in the last two, market, two, two hours of the day. Plan from there, or better yet, go 
go in after the market is closed, plan your trades, put in conditional orders. And so another great way to practice that I've found is on the Thinkorswim platform, the live money account, you can do on demand. You can use the on demand function. And I have got a great tutorial and it's free over on my YouTube channel, Market Tech Talk, that, that I go through how to use the on demand feature. And what I like about the on demand is I can take it back. I can go back in time to any place and trade anything. I can trade the S and P I can trade individual stocks. I can start it. Like if I wanted to go back to October 10th, 2005, I can go back to that day and then start ticking forward the process, or I can actually set it you know, and go and it works like a, uh, uh, um, a DVD that will go through that. You just click it forward, it'll tick, tick through. You can accelerate a little bit and you can get more trades in that way. You can get in 10 to 15 to 20 trades in an hour on the weekend and see how that accelerates your training because you need 100 trades. So, that, so all of those traits were things I learned when I was, uh, was in the Navy. And then, have you guys seen the, uh, the have you guys seen the, uh, I think it was a TED talk, but uh, it was by uh, Admiral, uh, oh gosh. The Admiral who was the, the uh, um, head of the, uh, head of the uh, SEAL teams, Bill uh, McRaven. And no, uh, he, he did a tech talk about developing discipline and he says he learned how to start developing discipline when he was a recruit in the Navy or, or, or in, in uh, when he went to SEAL school, BUDS, because of how he had to make his bed. You had to make it with precision, 45 degree angles. And he said, that's the first thing he did every morning. That way he approaches every day with discipline. And uh, Bill McGraven is a, uh, is a friend of mine. We actually uh, went to the University of Texas together in the ROTC system there, you know, of course, many, many years ago. But, uh, but I, it was kind of cool to see somebody you know who's, who's famous like that. <laughs> hmm. so, so, so that's what I learned. And that's what I try to apply. Do I do it successfully all the time? No. Um, I still you know, step on my foot and make mistakes and all that kind of stuff. But dadgummit, I journal it. I make sure that I write it down and then I go back at least once a quarter and see, am I repeating certain mistakes? If I'm repeating certain mistakes, it typically goes back to, especially self-sabotaging mistakes, it goes back to something that's going on internally with me, not my system. Interesting. I, I'm curious to hear, I know that we're starting to get short on time, but I, I am curious to hear well, the, what's your journaling process like? Are, are you writing a journal? Like, are you keeping it in a binder? Is it something? Of, ah, there it is. So, I have this. Okay. okay. And basically, basically, it just starts every day. Um, like today is the thirteenth, and we are on day trading day number one twenty eight for the <laughs> year, wow. because. The trading days for the year are different than the calendar days for the year, right? Yep. Because uh, there's only there's about 200 plus uh, trading days, and so this is one of the things I capture what I'm trading, how it did. I, I make any comments about, you know, how I was feeling, what I was seeing when I was putting on the trade. Um, uh, I tried to grade the trade. We have to remember to take off the labels. There is no such thing as a a good or bad trade. Mm -hmm. Now there can be a failing trade where you where a person failed to follow all of their rules or failed totally. So that gets an F. However, on the majority, even if I have a loss on the trade, I could still get an A on it because I traded it per the rules, the rules worked and I didn't make an operator error. And even though it was a losing trade, it still deserves a rating of an A because it's actually a perfect trade. So get rid of the bads and goods trades and just go with, okay, how did it grade out? 
and uh, and then go back and review it. Am I repeating any, any? Am I getting in too early? Am I getting in too late? Is there some some tie there? So that's what I do. And then my son also, um, the the creative one. Not, <laughs> both my sons are creative, <laughs> but the one who's the author, he also developed a a active trend trading uh, uh, trading journal, and it's one of the best sellers on uh, uh, Amazon actually. Uh, wow. And so, so uh, yeah, so he's. Uh, he, he provides that there and it comes in two different sizes, the big eight and a half by 11 and the little smaller one like that, like this, the, that, uh, that I use. But I, yeah, I typically just use a spiral notebook and, and I also use the other journal, but primarily, you know, old, old habits do die hard. And so that's, that's what I do. But journaling is so important. If you're not, if you're not journaling your trade, you're not, I'm sorry, that sounds a little bit, ivory towerish, but if you're not journaling your trade, you're not serious about trading. And if you don't have a system and don't do back testing and don't practice your trades, you're not serious about trading. You're out there just basically for the thrill, for the, you know, the, the rush of adrenaline. And, um, and, um, and, I, and I thank you for being like that because you're the one who gives me their money. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And it, Something that, that, that I like to do, too, is um, I, after every trade, uh, I do a, well, what I call an after-action report on the yeah. trade. Right on. Uh, yeah, uh, just two main questions uh, that I'm asking uh, on each one. Uh, I'm curious to hear if, uh, if you're asking yourself questions after each trade and well, what your questions are. The questions uh, that I'm asking myself uh, on each trade are, the uh, first question is, what went well? Okay. Right? Uh, like, uh, uh, to first set myself up for like a, a positive outlook on that trade because there's always something that, that worked uh, on that trade. Uh, the second question that, that I'm asking myself is uh, why, uh, what can be improved or what could have been improved uh, on this trade? Because there's always something that uh, can be improved of whether it's a winner or not. So, as, uh, so framing it in that way versus like, oh, well, what went wrong? Mm -hmm. Right? Like a, uh, I like to ask myself the question is one, how well did I follow my routine? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I also like to know, okay, did I trigger into the trade off of conditional order? That's my preferred way method of entry. And, and the reason why it means if I've triggered in, if I've gone into a trade off of a conditional order, it means that I had done my homework on the trade and it wasn't just an impulsive or compulsive middle of the day trade. Mm. So it would get kind of a higher grade if I, like if I was to have two trades that were both successful, the one that triggered in on a conditional would get a higher grade. In other words, it may get like an A or an A minus where the one that I took middle of the day or, or was uh, that may get a B or something because I didn't, have this, you know, I didn't do the setup. Um, and so, yeah, I keep it fairly confined to a very, um, a very uh, strong stable of stocks. You know, uh, I'm talking about like a horse stable of stocks and ETFs. And I want it very, very small because, and that again, that's something I got from Bill O'Neill. What, what did he typically manage? He would manage six to seven to eight stocks basically that he would be in, invested in at any one time. And that, cause he's found out he couldn't manage any more than that. So. But yeah, those are things I look for. I want to keep it on the, and, and then I also ask myself, was I in too early or out? And, and did I hold on to it long enough? At the same time, if I've hit my profit targets, I don't cry over spilt milk if it goes on to reach new highs, that's, that is another thing mindset wise I'd had to, had to deal with because I would get so ticked off because I, let's say I take a 15 or 20% gain and then it would go on for 40%. Mm -hmm. I had to come to, had, had to come to an acceptance of I'm happy. You know, what person in their right mind wouldn't be happy with 20% unless they were the ultimate perfectionist. 
Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> I've got to remind myself of that too sometimes. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Well, it, Dennis, uh, it, you, you've been with us uh, already for, for over an hour and the time just flew by. Yeah. Um, I, I really want to say thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, are there any final thoughts, uh, words of inspiration or, or anything that, that you'd like to, uh, to leave us with here? Mm. You know, learn a good system, test the system, and then when people say make it your own, you don't have to do a complete reinvention on it. Just, you know, you can adapt yourself. And that probably is mindset to make it yours, make it yours. And uh, I guess I would like to leave you with uh, the, uh, what my mentor used to tell me, because I was kind of an impatient kind of trader. Uh, and I would get so upset with myself when I would miss trades. He'd say, uh, you know, Dennis, he goes, don't worry about it. The best trade of the year, the best trade of the year comes around about every two weeks. <laughs> so, be, so be patient. That's great. I love it. Well, Dennis, thank you so much. Uh, again, really appreciate it. Everybody go check out Dennis uh, on, you're on Instagram, you're on YouTube. Uh, right. You've got activetrendtrading.com. We'll put all that into the show notes. Um, Thank you, sir. And yes, Dennis, that, thanks again. Thank truly you so much, it. Dennis. Truly appreciate you being on the show. So wonderful meeting you and you helped so many people today. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa and Michael. I really appreciate it. And again, the invitation to come stay with us in Hawaii is open to you. Just, uh, just I mean, I'm serious. That we've got a really, you know, uh, great, we, we do, you know, the Wilborn's bed and breakfast. You know, we can take care of it. No. Uh, I'm booking <laughs> the flight now. And <laughs> No, thank you. There both. you go. And again, Mike, continue the great work. You guys both together, uh, continue the great work. Uh, 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 you're in, in an area with trader mindset that so many traders need help with. And so, uh, uh, and with the ultimate goal of developing master traders who can just think about that. What you're doing is you're setting the course and helping some folks who, who grab it and, and run with it, set a legacy for their whole family of wealth building and uh, it, it'll change their life, you know, just change their life. So God bless you both. Oh, thank you. You too, Dennis. Thanks, thank Dennis. you. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Take care. God oh, bless. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.